Today is Friday, August 5, 2022. I'm Pastor Michael, and this is Wilderness Wanderings. Our text is from Psalm 67. May God be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face shine upon us, that your ways may be known on earth, your salvation among all peoples. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. May God bless us still, so that all the ends of the earth will fear him. Verses 1 to 3 and 7. Have you ever asked God to bless you? Of course you have. We Christians hardly ever pray without asking for God's blessing. And we know these are not empty prayers, because God does want to bless us. Pastors regularly offer these words to their departing flocks. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turns his face the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Number six, twenty four to twenty six. God told Moses and Aaron to lift their hands over Israel, blessing his people with those words. But have you ever wondered what they mean? To ask it differently, when we ask God to bless us, are we asking for what he wants? From Psalm thirteen verse one and 89 verse 46, we learn that when God hides his face from his people, it means trouble. It's a poetic image, picturing the curse of sin having full license to do its worst. When God's face is turned towards his people, then the effects of the curse are held at bay, even repelled. The oddest thing is that when God turned his face away from his own son, in the darkest hour of Jesus' life, God was turning his face fully toward us. During those darkest hours this world has ever known, in those events that led Jesus to cry out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This same God was pouring out his blessings upon this earth. It's true that when we ask God to bless us, we are often praying from selfish motives. Richard Foster tells us that all prayer begins here. But as we continue to pray, our motivations begin to change. Prayer changes us. Rather than looking fully towards our own interests, we move towards God's. But this takes time, so maybe long prayers are not always a bad thing. In prayer, we turn our faces towards God. As we gaze upon him, our petty motivations and desires crumble away. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, we become absorbed with the great works of God. This is where Psalm 67 leads us. It echoes that blessing of number six, and, I think, the Lord's Prayer echoes the psalm. God's blessings towards us serve the larger purposes of his redemptive work in Christ. We are blessed so that others may know the great ways of God, so that they may know how great Israel's God is. God blesses us so that we can bless others. But there is even more to it than that. The structure of the psalm suggests that verse 4 is the heart of the matter. It says, May the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you rule the peoples with equity and guide the nations of the earth. We are blessed, so that the nations may join us in glad songs of praise to our God. In the end, all nations will be gathered about the throne of God and the Lamb, as pictured in Revelation 7. There before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Verses 9-10 through To that end, God blesses us. Let's pray for that. As you journey on, go with the blessing of God. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you, wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors.